Some people say that Lego cheese slopes are one of the most useful pieces ever created, and I don't disagree, because although they stack up in my parts bins, I can never seem to get enough of them. And I mean seriously, everybody uses these in their builds, but so few people know how to use them creatively. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you all five part hacks for the Lego cheese slope. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so this first one is actually pretty well known among the LEGO community, and I would say this is kind of your basic cheese slope part hack. Just take two cheese slopes and put them in either a plate or a brick, and then put another plate or a brick on the other side. And as you can see, this lets you build in opposite directions without taking up a ton of space or being super fragile. If you do this with single wide cheese slopes and two plates, you get something that's just barely thicker than a brick. So if your build is pretty small or you don't care about having super precise geometry, then actually I would recommend this, it's so handy. Technique number two starts off pretty simple, but gets complicated fast. I've broken it down into three smaller steps so it's easier for you to understand. And step number one is the easy step. Essentially, it's just a cheese slope with another one upside down on top of it. In this example, I use clips and a bar to make it connect, but you don't have to. In the second example, I've made it a little bit more complicated so you can see kind of what this does, which is it makes a little tiny stripe in whatever build you're making. For those of you curious, this is actually a half plate thick, meaning it's the exact same thickness as a base plate, theoretically. This last design was made by my friend Paulville Mox on Instagram, and basically he's just trying to show everybody what this looks like in context. So in the center, there's a brick with studs on all sides, and then coming off of that is four cheese wedges. Surrounding that is a bunch more cheese wedges that kind of make the micro striping box thing. I don't know what to call this. <laughs> I don't, I have no clue. It's a box. And then around the back, there's just some plates holding it in so that everything stays together and doesn't just fall apart because that would kind of suck. But yeah, using that little front lip on cheese slopes is a really good way to get little tiny lines throughout your build if you just need that extra level of detail. Moving on to hack number three. Tip number three is a lot easier to use than tip number two because it's just a way of making a smooth slope out of cheese wedges. For everyone watching who's new to Lego, the back end, the tall end of a cheese slope is two plates high. The front end, like I previously mentioned, is about a half a plate high, so that makes it very difficult if you're trying to make a smooth slope out of these. One easy way to fix this is to make this pattern of earlings or make a similar pattern out of bracket pieces because I know that works too. And by doing that, you have a bit of a zigzag. When you build on that zigzag though, the cheese wedges line up because they're a little bit weirdly shaped and this is actually kind of a, a near perfect solution for getting them to line up. Moving on to the next part hack. Part hack number four is really cool looking but also takes forever to make. I guess this isn't so much of a part hack as it is a build idea. As you can see here I've made some sort of like carpet thing and also a hexagon pattern which maybe could also be a carpet, I don't really know. The point is that you can make some really cool stuff with this and I've actually seen some people make like stained glass windows out of cheese wedges which is really cool. The catch with this one though is that you probably want some tweezers to help you place these things because they take forever. They come out really great though and I highly recommend doing it if you've never done it before just because it's a, it's a new experience. It's fun. Design number five is another broad topic because I don't think a lot of people realize how many ways you can incorporate cheese slopes into walls. You can see here I have a 1x4 brick with a 1x4 plate on top and it's just kind of basic. If you're building something modern or smooth, I suppose it works fine, but if you're building something medieval or stony, then you definitely don't want to do that. Obviously using a cheese slope in a wall is not going to make you have to change your design plans, but it is going to add a lot more detail and also use up a lot more small parts. So uh, yeah, I hope you have deep pockets. Just in case anyone was still confused on how I did that, I built it in high contrast as well. So yeah, I mean, bright colors, cool. I've also seen people use cheese wedges for walls in other ways, but this was just a quick example I whipped up for you guys and I'll try to throw some more examples up on screen. That's the last tip for this video though, but before you all click off, you guys should know that Dan the Fan made a similar video about Lego minifigure hands, which is kind of a weird part to do a video about, but he has some really good ideas. So go check that out if you wanna see some even cooler Lego tips. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I'm not gonna waste more of your time though, so spread some good vibes and see ya.